What's up everyone? Thanks for joining me for another video. Today we're taking a look at a really cool pair of lifestyle shoes, even though they started their journey as a performance running shoe. They're not born in the 80s or 90s. I guess technically they're born in the 90s, but they were released in the year 2000 to coincide with the Olympic Games. And they are the Nike Air Presto. Thank you everyone for clicking through to the video and listening to me talk about shoes. I could literally talk about shoes all day long. If you do have any comments, please pop them in the comments below. I do like to try and get around to everyone that comments. Also, if you like the video, please hit like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Thank you to everyone who subscribed. I can't tell you how much it means to me. It really, really does. Also, please head over to Instagram. Check out my page, Three Kicks A Day. It's where I'm usually posting content daily. Now, getting into the Air Presto. This is a shoe that reminds me of another shoe that's really near and dear to my heart, and that is the Nike Air Harachi. I have particularly fond memories of the Harachi because it was my first ever pair of Nike shoes, and I wore those things down. I mean, I wore them every chance I got. But this isn't a Harachi video. I did want to make reference to that particular shoe because the Presto reminds me of it a lot. It has a very flexible upper that is minimal and is cased by some sort of firmer material. I'll get to the particulars of each aspect of the Presto as we break the shoe down, but a bit of history on the Presto itself. This was born, the concept at least, in 1996 by Toby Hatfield. And Toby Hatfield is actually Tinker Hatfield's brother. Tinker did design the Harachi from 1991. I thought it was interesting to point out that it was another Hatfield that designed the Presto. In any case, the design statement, or whatever it's called at the time, was to create a shoe that would mimic a barefoot running experience. An upper that would mold to the foot. Today, we are spoilt for choice. We have max cushion shoes, high stack height shoes, low stack height shoes, barefoot shoes, shoes with virtually no midsole at all. But it wasn't always like that. And so what Toby Hatfield and the team decided to embark on was a journey to create a shoe that was lightweight, flexible, and mimic that barefoot running experience. It took four years and many iterations of designs before they landed on the Presto. The Presto though was very short-lived. I think it only lasted about a year. It was replaced by another project that was looking to address the same issues that the Presto set out to resolve. We would know this Nike brand now really well, and that is the Nike Free range. So Nike Free, I guess, prioritized any of those lightweight type of runners, and whatever was available at the time that did fit that bill was shafted, I guess. But thankfully, the Presto made a comeback and it has been released a couple of times in a couple of different colorways. I've recently picked up this version, which is the triple black, and gotta say, I love it. It is super comfortable and really looks the goods. I mean, as far as design goes, it was born in 1996, released in 2000, 
but holds up so well today. And that's just a testament to how ahead of its time the Presto really was. Now, what we're going to come across as we go through this review, given it's a triple black shoe, there's not much for me to talk about with respect to color schemes. It's black, 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 black. But what is available to those of us in Australia and maybe other parts of the world is a Nike Buy You option for the Presto. It is excellent value at only $10 more than the retail price of a Presto. Here it's 200 Australian dollars and a Presto retails for 190 Australian dollars. However, you do need to go into the women's buy you menu and then select Presto from there where you will have the option to select either women's or men's sizing. There are some really cool options where you can basically select a color for almost every component of the shoe. Everything except this heel tab, I think. But do yourselves a favor and check it out. In any case, we'll break down each of the components of the shoe, starting with the outsole. And what we've got are some pretty deep flex grooves and some pretty thick rubber that covers basically the entirety of the shoe. It is fairly soft, and that's one thing that I noticed. I'm not sure how durable it would be if you were planning on running in it. Hopefully you're not planning on running in it. There's a lot of better choices at this price point. For day-to-day -day wear, it's going to be fine. It's comfortable, no issues with traction. And from an aesthetic perspective, in this particular colorway, it really isn't interesting. It's just an outsole. If you do select another colorway, or in the buy you options, I would do something a little bit different. Give it a color with a bit of pop. That way, every time you lift your foot off the ground, the person behind you gets a real visual treat. The midsole. It is a Phylon midsole, and it has an encapsulated air unit in the heel. From a tech perspective, it's very basic, but it works. I've got to say, walking around in it for the past couple of days, I've got no issues at all. It's actually really comfortable. You, you know, I see this fitting the bill for a type of shoe that you would look at and say, I need to spend all day in this pair of shoes. Which one should I pick? I don't think you'd have any issues in this guy. That probably brings us to another point that we'd need to discuss with the upper. So this upper is not neoprene, even though it looks like neoprene. It is a material called spacer mesh. So one of the issues with neoprene, like what we saw in the Harachis, was that it was not breathable. Those things will trap heat like nobody's business. From the outside, looks like neoprene, but on the inside has a mesh-like pattern to it. Super comfortable on foot, but from a circulation perspective, it's hard for me to comment given that we've got some cooler weather here where I live in Australia. I'd be interested though if there is anyone out there who is rocking a pair of Prestos in a warmer climate. How do you find circulation in the Presto if you're wearing them on a hot day? Let us know in the comments below. A note on the buy you options though, you have the option to actually get the material inverted, which looks kind of cool. And that means that you would get this mesh pattern exposed on the outside. I've played around with a few designs and I think it looks really good like that. What we'd usually see on an upper this flexible is some sort of layer over the top to add some stability. Typically, I think in a lot of running shoes at least, we see TPU as a material being used a lot just because it adds that rigidity to whatever part of the shoe you're looking to apply some stability to. In this case though, we've got rubber and that rubber is a cage that wraps from the midfoot right around to the heel and also around the toe cap. If I flex the rubber cage, you'll see just how much it moves. But on foot, you really do feel these areas working as they should. But what it still does is allows the shoe's upper to be flexible. So it doesn't compromise the shoe's mission statement. Really clever, really comfortable, and works really well. There is only one minor complaint, and I'm not sure if it's only on this colorway at least. The rubber part, I guess, on the toe cap is like a gloss, and that is really prone to scratching. So something to be aware of, you know, if you're funny about stuff like that, I guess you can't help it. It is a byproduct of wearing your shoes. As far as the entry system goes into the shoe, it is a booty style construction. You would expect that from this type of shoe. There is some really light padding around the tongue and also the heel. You've got a pull tab as well. We know I love me a pull tab, but it's not overly done. It is Fairly light in terms of padding, but it's comfortable. Laces, yeah, they're, they're laces. I mean, you know, the shoe itself fits so well because it's a booty style construction in this space and mesh material, but the laces add just that 
nice little, I guess, wrapping, <laughs> whatever. They're laces. Maybe let's take a look at how they look on feet. There you have it guys, that's my review of the Air Presto. It's a shoe I really, really like. It is comfortable on foot and it really ticks a lot of boxes, especially from a lifestyle perspective. Like I said, it was a performance runner back in 2000. I certainly wouldn't be planning on doing any running in it now, nor would I encourage anyone to do it. But for day-to-day -day wear and even for where you might need to wear a shoe for long periods of time, I really think this offers that comfort in a nice interesting package. The only downside is the price, I think $190, at least that's what they are here in Australia. It is a little bit expensive considering what you're getting, but keep in mind that there is that buy you option. It's only a $10 premium, I'm pretty sure it's $200 Australian dollars and it gives you some really cool customization options. It means you get a really unique shoe that has a super cool aesthetic and is actually comfortable to wear. So if you are looking at picking up a pair of Prestos, I recommend you go and check that out. But if you do have a pair of Prestos and I haven't represented them in the right way, or even if you agree with what I said, please let us know what your experiences are in the comments below. But until the next video, laters.